Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News contributor Dr. Tara Narula. This week, Congress finally passed a spending bill authorizing $1.1 billion to fight the Zika virus. It comes after nearly seven months of debate, during which some 19,000 people in the U.S. and Puerto Rico contracted the virus. It's also about $800 million less than President Obama requested back in February. John? How's this money going to be used? Well, lots of things. Most immediately, the vaccine development, because in order to go to the next phase, the phase two, they're, they're out of money. So they need this desperately. They need to figure out better testing. I was just speaking to Tom Frieden, head of the CDC. Mm -hmm. He said, we really need better testing. We need to figure out better ways of killing these mosquitoes. And then we need education. Well, up next, uh, deadly air pollution. Well, this week, the World Health Organization released a report detailing the health impact air pollution has on the global population. It estimates that 92% of the world's people live in places where air quality is poor. They also estimate that at least 7 million premature deaths a year are attributed to indoor and outdoor air pollution. Now, the report calls air pollution the most serious environmental risk factor we face. Uh, John, they call this the invisible killer. Yeah, it is an invisible killer. Uh, and believe it or not, it contributes, according to the WHO, to about a third of deaths from stroke COPD, which is a form of chronic lung disease, yeah. and lung cancer, and up to 30% of deaths from heart disease. So wow. this is not just a theoretical problem that could affect us. It's killing us now. Mm. Tara, they looked at the whole world in, in, in analyzing this data. I mean, how did countries with large populations compare? Right, so it turns out that the air you breathe, the quality of it, in large part depends on where you live. Mm -hmm. And there is a big geographical difference depending on what country or what continent. Uh, in this report, they found that countries with large populations, China, India, Russia, those populations had very high death uh, rates per capita. In addition, 90% of the deaths from air pollution are occurring in low and middle income countries, in particular regions like Southeast Asia, the Western Pacific, and the Eastern Mediterranean. Those are areas that have very poor air quality in terms of levels of air pollution and also very high rates of death from air pollution. Well, John, 194 member states belong to the World Health Organization. What are they doing to really impact? Well, they've come numbers? out with this roadmap uh, last spring and then they have some other action plans. So basically the whole world has to get together and figure out this is affecting all of us. Now, there are, of course, things that everybody can do and governments can do. Clean energy, of course, renewable energy, hydroelectric, solar, wind, that's really important. But also, and this is interesting, the WHO points out, WHO points out that billions of people around the world use cooking stoves at home that cause a ton of pollution. And oh. there are ways, there, there are ways now that are not that difficult to create clean cooking stoves, and this could make a huge amount of difference. So people think it's a thing that governments can do. No, there are things that you can do individually, and people can contribute to that kind of effort. All right, moving on. Flu season is just about upon us, so it's time to think about getting vaccinated. The CDC has just released vaccination statistics for last year, showing an estimated 144 million Americans got their shots in 2015. That's about 45 percent of the U.S. population, down around one and a half percent from the previous year. John, what sector of the population is most at risk here? Well, we always talk about kids, people, especially children under the age of five, but especially under the age of two, the elderly, which is considered 65 and over, pregnant women, and also people with chronic medical conditions. But in addition to that, the CDC talks about uh, people who are in chronic care facilities, nursing homes, and American Indians and Alaskan Natives. Really? Yeah. Dr. Narula, what, what specifically, how do these vaccination rates affect children? Right. So, well, the good news is in 2015 and 16, the vaccination rates for children stayed steady in comparison to the year before, around 59%. The bad news is it's only 59%. That means yeah. about 40% of kids are not getting vaccinated. In addition, it changes as the kids get older. So from ages six, to tw six months to 23 months, about 75% of kids are getting vaccinated. That drops off over the next 10 or so years, so that by 13 years old to 17, the rates drop to about 46%. 
This was interesting. The CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics is not recommending the use of nasal spray vaccines. Yes, to yeah. the dismay of many parents, oh, no. I am sure. So what's that going to mean to the numbers, do you think? Well, there is concern by the CDC and public health officials, and rightfully so. I mean, no parent wants to watch their child be tortured with a shot. And the nasal flu mist was very uh, popular. About one-third of the vaccinations given to kids were in the form of the nasal flu mist. But what they found is it really was not effective over the last several years. Uh -huh. And so now they are only recommending the shots. And I think the important thing, as John mentioned, kids are very vulnerable to this. And so while we think of it as being an acute self-limited disease process, it can cause serious complications. 20,000 hospitalizations a year for kids, 100 deaths a year, lost school days, lost work days, really important for parents to vaccinate. I was reading that it was the strength of the nasal swab. And, and in particular, there are a lot of adults who opted for that option. Right. And they don't really know why exactly it didn't work, but it really was not effective for the last several years. Okay, Dr. John LaPook and Dr. Tara Narula, we thank you for being with us.